Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So I'm going to do a video today about something that's been a bit of a hot button topic on one of the stroke forums I belong to on Facebook. That being stroke recovery timelines. So to translate that from medical speak to human speak, how long is it going to take you to get back to normal after your stroke? So going to preface this by saying I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical practitioner, licensable in any way, only played one on TV. Before my stroke, I did work with acquired brain injury clients for a number of years, um, so I have some experience academically, clinically, and now unfortunately experientially with brain injury. Uh, before I get going though, I just want to say hello Ashley. Ashley, you recently joined our merry little band of stroke folk. Um, you're in the UK, you're a stroke assaulter yourself, and I don't know what brought you or helped you stumble along to the, the channel, but thanks for joining. So we're going to discuss in realistic terms uh, what your stroke recovery may look like. I'm also going to preface this conversation by saying Please consider what I'm talking about are guidelines. They're not written in stone. They're not hard and fast rules. They are not in any way meant to be specific reach-only benchmarks, right? They, they, these are guidelines, right? Let me also say that any discussion about recovery specifically for any one individual needs to be a conversation with your neurologist, your speech path, your physical therapist, and your occupational therapist, preferably all in the same room at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Let me also say that when you look at studies for stroke recovery, there aren't a significant number of sample size relevant longitudinal studies after about the five-year mark, in fact, if not after the two-year mark, um, after a stroke. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, two years after your stroke, medically, there's not much they're going to be able to do for you if they haven't done it already. Unless it's a case, there's a surgery that needs to be done, and for some reason, they are delaying that. Um, so medically, there's really not much they can do for you two years after your stroke. So there's not going to be a lot of research on what can be done two years and beyond. Uh, drug companies, they're not going to make any new money off a stroke. Um, for that, you're going to want to look at the, the video I did about uh, orphan, the orphan disease concept of stroke. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description below so you can watch that. Also consider your insurance companies. Uh, about the two-year mark, if you're still on an insurance roll somehow, either through work or, or whatnot, they're going to want to get you off their insurance rolls and get you on some kind of government-based disability. So, the two-year benchmark, going to be realistic about this, it's a financial one, right? Um, the powers that be see no benefit in researching on a significant level anything that happens after two years. Now, does that mean you will not make any gains? You will not see progress once the 24th month hits? No. No. Recovery, rehabilitation, and reintegration from your stroke can occur at any time. Okay? So for some of you out there, I'm going to mention timelines, and you're going to say, well, that wasn't me. I know. Right? Um, so let's just look at this. There's essentially four phases in your stroke recovery. Step one, have stroke. Right? So you've had your stroke, and from day one, about the first week, um, you've got a lot of shock, surprise, and suspense because you've just had a stroke. Uh, that will be exacerbated if you've had to spend some time in an induced coma. 
you have your stroke on the 12th of October, you wake up two days ago, you've been in a hospital for two months or two weeks or whatever the case may be. Now, not only are you waking up in a hospital, probably having no recollection how you got there, but now being told you've been in a coma for you know, a month or so and you've also had a stroke. So that, I can't even imagine what that would look like. So the first seven days after your stroke, they're pretty scary. Uh, one, you have that realization that you legitimately almost died. Right? You now have to realize that your body and your brain significantly don't like each other. Um, you now have to realize that you may have aphasia, communication difficulties. You may have apraxia, be that verbal or nonverbal. Um, now I've done videos on aphasia and apraxia. Um, you may have other mobility issues. You may have, like, the laundry list of issues you may have initially recognized in the first seven days. Because I know the first week after my stroke first three or four days I was too scared to sleep I was legitimately just too scared to sleep and then as the days progressed you start to take an inventory of what's different and then you start to realize that there's a lot of different going on here so the first seven days are very suspenseful because you're waiting for the other shoe to drop several times over then you've got phase two of your stroke. The first, now the one document I found says one to eight weeks, but I'm going to use six weeks, right? Um, so the first six weeks, that's where your brain in and of itself does the most organic repair, right? That's the brain just trying to have its, find its happy place again, right? Uh, the first six weeks, that's where your brain is just trying to settle. Right? That's where, you, you know, you're going to have, that's where you're going to do some, some of the most difficult work you're going to have to do because that's where you're going to start seeing your bevy of appointments, be it your occupational therapist, be it your um, speech and language, be it your physiotherapist, be it a, a counselor, right? So during those, that period of time, that's where the brain is, is trying to do the most amount of healing that it can. Now then. Also during that six, first six to, you know, weeks one to eight, or, for, or I'm just going to say the first six weeks, that's where you're starting to reinterpret your life, right? You're trying to make accommodations. How am I going to put on my shoes today? Am I even going to attempt laces today? Um, learning how to cut your food again, right? That's, that's where you're trying to just figure out how you're going to get along for the next little while because you honestly don't know right uh you then have weeks or sorry from the first six to eight weeks right that's where you start to figure out exactly what's going on right now you then have the six week the six month period, right? And, and in the first six months, right, that's where you're going to start being able to not only reinterpret, reevaluate, but start to rehabilitate how you're able to do things. It's the first six months where you're going to make the largest amount of gains, right? Now, I appreciate there are going to be people out there, well, my hand didn't move for the first nine months, okay? We'll get into that later. So, in the first six months, that's where you're going to see the most amount of effort provide the most amount of outcome, right? And that's just because the brain is being malleable, right? And you're pretty keen, let's face it, in the first six months, you're pretty keen on getting your shit together and getting back, on, back, back to life, right? And a life that looks relatively normal from what you're used to experiencing. You then have six months to a year. Right? You will continue to make gains from the six month to the year mark. They're just going to take more effort. That's just the reality of it. 
from six months to a year, this is where you need to learn to develop routines, right? So the first four or five months after your stroke, it's pretty programmed for you. I've got physio this day, that day, that day. I've got my counseling appointments on this day. I see my rehab specialist on that day. I go to occupational therapy on this time. I got my speech and language pathologist here. You know, there's a fair amount of programmed activity. Generally, that's going to fall away. I mean, I mean, generally, in the about the sixth month, seventh month, right? Depending on how, why you're seeing those people and what funding model they're working on and, and when they have to do their functional assessments and need for service assessments, right? So at some point, these programmed activities will start to fall away one after another, one after another, one after another. So in my case, I only saw my speech and language guy twice. I saw my occupational therapist three times. And I saw my physiotherapist the most. Right? So, and eventually these appointments just fall away because the funding model you're working on requires a review for a need, what's called a needs for service assessment. And whatever assessment tool they use, they use. Um, and once you score above a certain number, they're not allowed to, unless you pay for the service out of your own pocket, the insurance company or your healthcare plan, or in my case, the province of Ontario, won't pick up the bill. Right. So now once you get to the six month and longer mark, now it's when the responsibility is on you. You have to take the time to develop the routines. Right. You have to find the time to create the new behaviors. Uh, be that get a handle on your diet. Right. Be that go to the walking group. Like every Tuesday, I try to get out to the, the stroke walking group in my local community for a couple of hours just to get out into the world. Um, I've recently started to go back to the gym. So I try to find time every day when I can to go to the gym and, and do what I can there. Uh, initially, I'm just working at getting used to going to the gym. Uh, and right now, I'm just working on cardio and a little bit of weights. Right? Just to get into the routine of getting into the experience of going back to the gym, right? And once I've been able to maintain that routine after a period of time, it'll just become part of daily life, right? Now then, some of you are going to say, well, I didn't have my arm move for the first six months or nothing happened for me in the first eight months. Yeah, I know. Like I said before, these are guidelines. However, if you choose to give up, right, like if you set a goal, um, I'm going to use my right arm again, or I'm going to walk down the street again. Right? If you choose a goal, <clears throat> but it gets too difficult because you're not seeing any progress, and then you give up, yeah, you get frustrated. My arm is sat there been essentially a swinging club for the last five months and I can't really move my fingers I can move my arm and I can hit things and I can push things but I can't move my fingers and I really it's just kind of a non-functional limb and if you give up practicing your exercises every single day eventually you you'll just give up in its entirety and you won't have any functionality right so that's where part of the, you know, you've got day one to seven, the shock and awe of it. Like, oh my God, I just had a stroke. <laughs> I just had a stroke. Yeah, crap, I almost died. Right? Then you get that, you know, first six weeks where you're trying to figure out exactly how disheveled your world is. And then, you know, you get the six weeks to six months where you're trying to, you know, re reintegrate old normal to new normal and try to find the best possible position then you get six months to a year where you continue to make gains provided you as the individual choose to work on it, right? Same is true for people that have, I'm just going to call it a delayed response, right? So you need to have a structured routine to get the benefits, 
right? Just like when you go to your physiotherapist, you go to your occupational therapist, they've got a plan of what they're going to do. So you need to develop a plan. Be that something as simple, and I'm not advertising for anyone, so if you happen to recognize the manufacturer, great. Be that as simple as something is you're just going to practice this. Right? And you're going to do that for 15 minutes or 10 minutes, three or four times a day. Something as simple as that. You know, it's a functional exercise. Unfortunately, there's jars in the world. Be it jam, peanut butter, for those weird ones out there, the marmalades, right? Um, be it pills, be it, you know, it, there's so many things work on a screw top, right? So just practicing that in and of itself has benefit. Right? So for those of you that are going to have the delayed response, I, I can only imagine how that's going to suck. I, I, can't e I can't even, you know, estimate what that would look like. And, and I'll be honest, because I, I'm kind of lucky, right? Now, part of the recovery process, right, is you're going to have to be realistic and you're going to have periods where things are going to suck and I'm just going to be realistic about it. You're going to have um, periods of what's called plateaus, right, where you, um, you get to a spot and then all of a sudden things just sort of level out for you, right? Well... And again, I'm going to include the links to some of the articles that I used uh, for the purposes of this discussion. So, lastly, let's get into some statistics, right? So, 10% of all stroke survivors, right, almost completely recover, right? To Now... When will that occur? Is that six months, a year, two years, right? I'm going to say at 24 months after your stroke, right? 10%, you will probably never know they had a stroke. 25% of people that have had a stroke will recover with minor impairment, right? Uh, right now, I'm in that minor impairment 25% portion, right? I'm, I'm aiming to be in that 10% portion two years after my stroke. 40% will experience moderate to severe impairments requiring special care. So there is a small population of the stroke folk that you are going to need uh, a wheelchair, a th support therapy animal, a cane, a walker. You know, you, you are going to need some accommodation in your world. 10% will end up in a nursing home or other long-term care facility. Uh, I was actually seriously considering that in the first two and a half weeks after my stroke that I didn't know if I could do it on my own because I, I live alone, right? And then grim reality is 15% will die shortly after their stroke, right? And that, that's just, and I'm not doing that to scare anyone. That's just the realities of a stroke, right? I'm... I've always tried to be realistic whenever I have, you know, conversations with my stroke folk. So, 15% within a very short period of time after the stroke will pass on. Right? Um, it, it's a, that, it's, just, it's not a great thing, but it, it's the reality of the matter. But let's, 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 let's look at the overwhelming statistics. Right? 40% will experience moderate to severe impairments requiring special care. But does that mean you're always going to be in that 40%? No. No. It means there is a potential over time that you could move into that 25%, that you'll recover with moderate, minor impairments. And then, does that mean you're going to be stuck in the 25%? No. You could then move to the 10%. My first day at the gym, I realized I... Uh, probably need to be standing or working on a machine near people because I'm still a bit wobbly at times. So I went to the treadmills and I took the machine next to a gentleman and I was a bit wobbly. He asked me if I was okay. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm just having a bit of a rough patch. I had a stroke five months ago. He goes, really? I'm like, yeah. 
He goes, well, you know what? You're looking really good. Let me tell you something. I had four strokes on the same day, 12 years ago. Like, beg so the gentleman I was standing beside when he was my age had four ischemic strokes because I asked him, like, these are ischemic, right? These weren't hemorrhagic. Um, he had four ischemic strokes pretty much back to back on the same day. And he told me for the first two and a half years, he had extreme difficulty walking. Right? Um, had foot drop, partial paralysis, um, just extreme difficulty walking. It's 12 years after a stroke. You would have no conceivable idea by looking at him, watching him working out, watching him move through a room, and, and watching him have conversations with people, you'd have no idea this man had a stroke. So he's an example that the six weeks, six months, one year, two year benchmarks, right, don't mean much. So again, all the date, all, all the the six weeks, six months, one year, two years, they're benchmarks. They're, they're not written in stone. They're not, you know, this is exactly what's going to happen. Here's when it's going to happen. Here's where it's going to happen. And, and that's the be all, the end all. That, that's not the case. Right? There is some hope that once you've had your stroke and you begin your rehabilitation and reintegration journey, that you will be able to get into that 10%. You know, it can take time. However, I'm going to implore you, please, with any expectations you set, uh, any routines you want to establish, any goals you want to set, uh, please do so with consideration of your clinical team. Right? Don't begin any exercise program uh, without consultation of your neurologist and your physiotherapist and other, pe other practitioners you work with, just to make sure you're doing so safely. Right? The last thing you need to do is have a heart attack or a stroke in the gym. <laughs> Fun fact, a concern of mine. So on that note, if you happen to like what you've been watching over the last five and a bit months, please like, share, subscribe. If you know someone going through their own post-stroke journey, like, sh uh, share the channel with them. If there's anything you want to see me cover, please leave a comment down below, um, or you can reach me directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, you can reach me directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. And if you happen to see someone that appears or you notice in yourself the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being uh, someone appears befuddled, someone who appears to have uh, eye difficulties. And again, these are rapid onset, so you immediately start to feel confused or befuddled. You immediately start to have vision issues. Um, you have facial droop. You have the inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all. You're unable to smile equally effectively or at all. You have speech issues, slurring, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Uh, you have general body weakness, weakness on one side, inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.